Before I begin, I just want to let you know that there will be like teeny tiny spoilers for a few games. So here are the games if you um, haven't played them. Go away. So recently I've been playing a lot of video games where I get to play as a dadder and I wanted to talk about what it was like feeling like I was a dad despite being someone who clearly doesn't want to have kids and has taken precautions not to have any. But nevertheless video games give you the opportunity to see the world from a different lens, from a different viewpoint from the characters you portray. And what is interesting with video games in particular is how they can try to make you have familial bonds and feelings towards what are essentially pixels. This all kind of began when I was getting into the Yakuza games and now I've done Zero, Kiwami and Kiwami 2. In Kiwami 1 there's a feature that I wasn't really expecting and that's where you get to interact with a character called Haruka. And Haruka is a character who you adopt as Kiryu himself is not a father and more of a foster father or a guardian and at the end of the game when you've pretty much done everything there's just this whole sub story slash minigame esque thing where you hold her hand and you walk down the streets and she'll say stuff like I want to go play gambling or eat a hot dog and you have to do the challenges or challenges that she gives to you but in the grand scheme of things it helps you to feel a bit more of a bond of caring for someone and I thought that was pretty neat. Kiryu himself is a pretty good father figure and a role model if I would say so. I mean he punches people in the face really hard and he's got a cool tattoo and he isn't bad at karaoke. But it made me think about what other video games are there where you put yourselves in a very daddish figure. Someone who is undeniably built the entire game experience around protecting a child or doing something daddish, like telling a joke, I don't know. The point is I had to rack my brain about how many times I got to play as a dad and I came up with a few examples. Number one having to be the big dad himself, <laughs> Kratos the god of war, also known as the god of dad. Boy. Boy. Come boy. Boy. Boy, 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 mind your tongue, boy. Kratos is a character I found was really fun to play as, not just because he's obviously stolen my look, but other than that, God of War is just one of those games where there's so much going on, but it never overwhelms you with too many complicated mechanics. Yes, there's the combat, which has layers and different elements, and you've got super moves, and you've got different weapons and combos and everything, but at its core, it's a pretty simple hack and slashy beat em up brawler. On the other hand, there's this story that undercurrents the whole thing, where you care for the boy, and boy is actually a quite interesting character himself. You go from burying the mother in the first sequence of the game to raising boy as a single dad, and this is during mythical medieval times. Ooh. And I don't think any child would really have a problem with seeing their dad beat up literal gods of war like Boulder and be like, oh that's my dad, my dad could beat up your cat. It's really fun to actually experience what it's like to have a reason to fight, not just because there is a goal of kill the guy who did you wrong or I need to get the next big weapon, but to actually have character that you're trying to shepherd through a journey of self-improvement and growth. And particularly with Atreus, the said boy, you get to see him go from this naive, sickly child into someone who will one day have the moniker of the next god of war, and you get to see him vastly improve his abilities from just occasionally shooting an arrow at an enemy that's causing you a bit of grief, to eventually grabbing the back of their neck and pulling it back so you can get a finishing blow, or shooting lightning arrows, and just being really useful. He even technically kills one of the gods of war that you're against, although it's a mini-god, it's a demi-god, it's, it's the god no one knows about in Norse mythology, it doesn't matter. But then I also started to think about what other video games are there where you play as a normal dad, that is a dad who doesn't you know, punch off the faces of mountain men, or you know, kill the literal god of creation of a pantheon of existence using a really sharp ancient weapon. Um, so then I started to cast my mind to video games where you get to play as normal dudes, who are nonetheless really, really cool, and it made me think of Barry Burton, because I've been replaying uh, the rest of Revelations 2 on the Xbox One, and my god, Barry Burton is the king of Resident Evil. A lot of people are like, oh, Leon S. Kennedy is the coolest guy. Pfft. 
Leon, Chris Redfield, who cares? It's all about Barry, my boy Barry. And here's one of the best reasons why. Near the end of the game, when you've basically beaten up everything and there's just the final boss of the game to go, Alex Wesker, ugh, and you've saved your daughter Moira and you've spent the whole of the game on his side looking for her and Claire Redfield's like she was on the island but I don't know what happened and there's a really stupid choice where she can die or not but if you do the right choice you get to save her and then Claire comes in with a helicopter and a sniper rifle and it's just you and Alexa and then Barry Burton does the most dad thing ever let me take care of this are you sure you don't need me, Barry? I mean, Dad. I'll always need you. But for now, I have this. Now <laughs> that's fucking cool. And the cool thing is that Barry's campaign, which is half of the story, he gets to help this little girl called Natalia to get to uncovering the truth that she's got amnesia from. And although it might be that she's actually a secret villain at the end, I'm not sure. It's really nice just seeing Barry's interactions with her where he's the guy who's armed with assault rifles, shotguns, sniper rifles, pistols and a big ass magnum. But he's the one who has to do all the damage dealing apart from Natalia throwing a brick every once in a while but it's cool because there's just like these bits where you're on this big ledge and you have to go over it to get to the next point in the level and he'll just take Natalia's hand and he'll slowly help her down the the little jump point and then when he jumps he just lets his hand in front in case she falls over and it's like that's a nice attention to detail not only is Barry a really badass character but he's also a really nice guy and screw Moira for not liking her dad that's a cool dad in my books speaking of the opposite end of dadadum if that's that's not a word but let's talk about Joel from The Last of Us now I haven't played The Last of Us Part 2 but I know when it came out a little while ago there was a lot of uproar about the story and the pacing and the characters and I haven't really got any qualms with that I've actually seen all the cutscenes I've seen all the story and I'm very glad I didn't play it because compared to the first game it's very much ugh, how do I put it it's very much um, sloppy seconds. I mean, Last of Us 1 didn't have particularly great mechanics. Its stealth was bare bones, its combat with the gunplay and the melee weapons was bare bones. It basically had more similarities with a Fable game for just like hitting a button to hit people. It was really basic. But the point was that Last of Us Part 1 was so well remembered and so beloved because the story is what carries you through the experience. I actually did a video about my thoughts on The Last of Us Part 1 just so you know. And I'm obviously not the only one who thought the story was really good because Last of Us Part 1 is one of the most highly regarded and rated and quote best games of all time. I think that's a stupid thing to say that The Last of Us is one of the best games of all time because the gameplay is so mediocre. But I understand why people say it because Last of Us Part 1 is a really cool experience. And one of the reasons it's so good is because you get to play as Joel and Joel is so much of an interesting character in the lineage of protagonists in video games is because he does questionable things but you know he does it for the right reasons. Yes it's a bit of a shame that you have to kill the Doctor at the end of The Last of Us Part 1 but if you don't kill the Doctor the other guys in his group will kill you and really the game forces you to kill him to progress and he's gonna like cut up a bit of Ellie's brain and this is the only character in this game at this point who you have any connection with so of course you're going to like do anything to help her and Joel does some really nasty things to nasty people so a lot of people say oh Joel's a nasty, nasty, nasty bad scumbag blah 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 but like in the game he does nasty things to nasty people and I think one of the problems with, with Last of Us 2, we never had the, the, the counterbalance to all of the, the nasty moments. Like, Joel can stab a guy in the neck several times because he's a bandit, and you don't really care because he's just a bandit. He's a guy who's going to mean you harm and he's going to do you in. And you're also protecting a young girl, and at some points a young boy as well. Of course you're going to do questionable things to protect the innocent. But in Last of Us 2, there really isn't that counterbalance, it's just nasty 
bad people doing bad things because they're all mopey and angry. Oh, it's so grim. And we didn't have, for example, the same amazing intro that The Last of Us 1 had where Joel's daughter gets mowed down by a nasty man. Instead, we get a bit where a guy is tending to a wounded zebra, like, <laughs> how patronising. One of the nice moments of Red Dead Redemption 2, which is a game that I did a lot of work on and really disliked a lot of it, and to be honest, one of the most fun bits for me was just the moments where you got to play as John Marston on his ranch. You're looking after your son Jack, and if you've played the first game, there are similar moments and you know that Jack will one day become the successor to his father's legacy as a bounty hunter and uh, an outlaw. But what's cool about playing Red Dead Redemption 2 at that point is you get to really bond with Jack and you get to see him go from this meek bookworm to someone who grows into a more hard-edged rough and tumble guy by the time you play Red Dead Redemption 1's epilogue. And that's kind of fun, just going on a wagon and riding around and talking about stuff only for it to be interrupted by a bunch of thugs who you then have to kill and it kind of gives you those nice moments where you, you physically see the progression of Jack's character and you also have stakes in the fight. It's not like when you play Arthur Morgan and you're just killing a bunch of guys in a cave because they eat people. Okay, but when you're actually there and your son is hiding behind a boulder and you have to kill the guys who are trying to kill you, not just for your own sake, but because it's the dad thing to do. And then we also get the other characters that I could think of, which were both from Bioshock games. Delta, who is a big daddy, and Booker DeWitt, who is a big daddy. The main point is that Booker DeWitt in Infinite doesn't know he's the father of Elizabeth for the longest time, and the antagonist is also Booker DeWitt, but with a big white beard, so he doesn't know he's the villain of the story he's in, which is very confusing for him, I'm sure. But we do get to see him try to be the more stern, let's, let's sort things out, stop playing around, don't be so immature, kind of dad. And he gets things done in a similar vein to Joel, not just because he's voiced by the same actor. But the point is, Booker DeWitt also shows some dad instincts. He also does stuff to help his daughter. Even though he doesn't know he's the biological father, he develops those paternal instincts just because of the situation they're in. Delta is a lot more basic because he doesn't say anything and he is essentially just a, a voiceless, hulking brute that kills things and helps little sisters but it's nice to play the DLC where you're actually the dad in question who was turned into a big daddy and it makes more sense of why he is a, is a, is a, I can't remember what they're called, like the Mark II big daddies with all the different code names and I think his name is Delta and, or Gamma, maybe it's Gamma, I can't remember. <laughs> the point is you then learn about his backstory and how he was trying to protect his daughter so he voluntarily went into the big daddy program so that instead of losing her forever in the, the little sister program he could watch over her even though he wasn't aware of it because his mind would be completely altered and he'd still be just a big hulking muscle bound freak who just kills people who get a bit too close to his daughter. And it's nice to play video games where you are physically put in the role of the dad, rather than a game where you have dads in the mix, but you don't get to play as them like Eli Vance from Half-Life 2. Although his relationship to his daughter is quite sweet, you don't play as Eli or Alex, and so you don't get to experience that firsthand. But games like The Last of Us or Red Dead Redemption 2, you do get to be put into the shoes of someone who has to think in a less selfish manner about how they go about the world because you are caring for someone and you are shepherding them through some of the difficulties of life, usually at the end of a shotgun. But I don't know, I just wanted to talk, uh, talk about dads. I think dads are cool. I like my dad, I love my dad. My dad's great. Um, I look like Kratos because I have a big beard which is only going to be here long, a little longer. And um, I like dads, I like playing as dads, and if The Last of Us Part 2 taught us anything, it's that if you don't get to play as the dad when you got to play as the dad, the game's worse, and um, yeah, bye.
Thank you.